And now it's time for this morning's encouragement. And our speaker this morning, Reverend Michael Record, is an author, a lecturer, and of course a minister. So we know he'll bring us an inspiring message. He's also a graduate from Kingston College, so I know his message will be <laughs> uplifting and inspiring this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Barnes. We must put first things first, you know, graduate of Kingston College, and then everything else comes out <laughs> after that. First things first in life. Good morning, friends. Welcome to you all worshiping today in the appropriately named Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. We are a center of light and illumination. We believe in and promote spiritual living. On behalf of the regular Temple family, I extend an especially warm welcome to you who are visiting for the first time. You may be pleased to hear that my talk was written largely with you in mind. For you, it's an introduction to our teaching, and it's a refresher to those who have already been introduced to it. I also greet my online listeners. For your benefits, you're not here now, here is a weather report. It's a wonderful, cool, but bright morning here in Kingston, Jamaica. The grass is especially glowing with its greenness and the flowers of many, many colors all around on the lawns and along the fences, etc. It's really quite beautiful. Wish you were here. But enough talk about the weather. Let's talk about sex. Wow, I saw a lot of ears perk up just now. I'm not surprised. For most of us, young or old, doing it or not doing it, are interested in sex. I say most because there are some people over in that area there <clears throat> who haven't bothered to start sexing again after giving it up for Lent five years ago. I wonder what fun thing they're doing instead our interest in sex is inborn, instinctive. Nature made us that way. Why? Not to make us happy, though happiness is our fundamental goal in life, at least on this plane of existence. Nature gave us and most animals an instinct for sex for the same reason it gave plants the analogous activity that is for the propagation of the species. In other words, life's ultimate goal is the creation of more life. That's why, for example, from one mango seed will come a tree that produces thousands of mangoes. Life wants to replicate, reproduce, propagate life. Now, that information about the nature capital, about nature capital N, gives us some information about the nature of God. It indicates God's fundamental purpose is the creation of more life. For example, the Holy Bible starts, in the beginning God created. And all the world's religions would concur. Now, while humans and most animals create offspring by having sex, God, as spirit, creates through thought, which you'll agree is not quite as much fun. But that's what we teach here in this church. 
And that form of creation is what I'm focusing on now. The sex talk was just to introduce it. <laughs> Sorry if you wanted more, perhaps another time. I now come to the text of my talk. It's a spiritual mind treatment, also known as affirmative prayer, by Tom Johnson. He's one of the luminaries of this teaching, philosophy, way of life we call religious science. The treatment was published in the now unfortunately defunct Creative Thought magazine and has an epigraph by Fenwick Holmes, the brother of Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science and the conceptualizer of our guiding set of principles, which is called science of mind. Fenwick Holmes' epigraph states, the instinct to create is found in every person. Common sense tells us that the reason that every human being has this creative instinct, a more fundamental instinct than the sex urge, is that we come from a creative source. A chip from a block of wood or stone or whatever has the same nature as the block. We come from God, therefore we have the nature of God, and the Bible tells us this. We were made in the image and likeness of, of the source. Since we create with our minds, that source logically must be mind, and it must be universal. I don't mean worldwide. Miss Universe is a miss, beauty queen of the world, but I, I, I mean literally universal. Whatever power created us, created the universe. We are actually made of stardust. Everything began with the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. Everything began with that, and everyone came much, much later. But living things are made of the same essential substance as non-living things. We truly are one with the universe. We have a name for the creative source. We know how to communicate with that source. And we are convinced that the source is supportive. These matters are addressed on the penultimate page of your program. In six quotations from Dr. Holmes, the heading is a new way to think. Please turn to there, that page. Page nine. A new way to think. Would you please read along with me together? There is a power for good in the universe, greater than you are, and you can use it. There is no question about the creativeness of thought. If any thought is creative, it must follow that all thought is creative. The law of mind is exact. The only question is, how are we going to use this creative power within us? Shall we use it constructively for a definite purpose? Or shall we use it destructively, merely because we do not understand it? Change the idea of a thing, and you will change the thing. To learn how to think is to learn how to live. Powerful, powerful statements. And of course, each one of them is worthy of an entire talk. But I reference them only as support for Tom Johnson's treatment. The treatment begins after the epigraph. The treatment itself begins. There is one creative power that is within everyone, which is the presence of God. Except that it gives a name to the creative power, God. It is pretty much a repetition of the epigraph, which I've already elaborated on. 
But Johnson continues, I quote, I choose to experience success, prosperity, love, and health always. Now that list is our four needs, man's four needs for happiness. I'll deal with each briefly. A, we all want to express our individuality, to make a unique expression on the canvas of life while we're here. Hence, success in whatever it is we do is necessary. We don't feel good when we fail. On the contrary, we feel great when we succeed. B, we need sufficient prosperity, AKA also known as abundance, to do things on this material plane in this world. Whether it's money, tools, or some substance, clay, wood, stone, cloth, whatever. We need that substance to create something useful, or in the case of artists, something beautiful. C, health is perhaps the most basic need. Without health, we are helpless. And D, we all want love, that is loving relationships, broadly speaking, to make any success that we have enjoyable. Psychologically, no man is an island entire unto himself, as John Donne said a few hundred years ago. Johnson's next sentence is, I realize that I must direct mind to create the ongoing experience of those choices, unquote. Now that sentence, and I'm especially for the newcomers, that sentence shows religious science's departure from the teachings of other religions, certainly Christianity, which teaches that we should find what God wants and then obey his will. In religious sense, we believe that God gives us choice about our paths in life. And we tell creative mind what we want to do, and it automatically supports us. We teach that creative mind is impersonal, impartial, has no favorites, no desire of its own, that as the movie The Secret, wonderful movie, try to see it, it's online. As the movie The Secret puts it, the universe always says yes to our instructions, yes to our commands. The genie from the lamp in the movie says, your wish is my command. And that is why bad people, let me rephrase that, People who do bad things can succeed, like the Las Vegas shooter. Unfair as it sounds on the surface, the universe doesn't judge the morality of motives or actions. It just responds to our feelings. Not, by the way, our words. Essentially, it's our feelings. Put in words. But let not your heart be troubled. Though the universe is not moral, it is orderly. Order is heaven's first law. As Alexander Pope, the poet, and later Thomas Troward said, actions have consequences, and bad actions will have bad consequences. And in the fullness of time, people who do bad things will reap the corresponding consequences, like the Las Vegas shooter. And of course, good actions have good consequences by law. We teach that thoughts, too, have consequences. I turn to the book, Key to Yourself, by Dr. Venice Bloodworth, 
for an elaboration on this point. In a metaphor-packed passage, check the metaphors out, she writes, I quote, the majority of people are drifting on the high seas of life. No chart marks their destination. No rudder holds a course. They are at the mercy of the winds of chance, the rocks of doubt, the shoals of ignorance. And if they make some progress before the curtain falls, it is because they have unconsciously used the creative they have used unconsciously the creative power that is the birthright of every individual and not any exact knowledge. In order that we may avoid aimless drifting with its wasted energy and its painful collisions, we must know something of the mighty principles that govern us and the world in which we live, something of the great occult law of cause and effects under whose operation our lives can be filled with pain and poverty or joy and success. In all the universe, there can be no things as luck or fate. Every action, every thought is governed by law. Behind every bit of good fortune lie the causes that we ourselves have sometime, somewhere set in motion. Behind all ill fortune, we will find the energy we ourselves have generated. Every cause must have a certain de definite effect. There is no dodging the results. We reap what we sow with exact mathematical precision, unquote. Who is Dr. Bloodworth? Author, academic, teacher, counselor. Dr. Bloodworth received her doctorate in psychology from Northwestern University, Chicago. She set her purpose as helping humanity by explaining that people can think themselves into actual well-being. Happy, being happy, prosperous, and beautiful. A word on beautiful. When she was 30, she said to herself, 30 is such a wonderful age to be. I look so good at 30. I think I will remain looking 30. And she remained just about looking 30 for decades after that. It's all in this book. It's a marvelously insightful book that could change your life. If it's not in the book room, maybe Val Richuk will lend you her copy, <laughs> which I'm returning to her <laughs> after holding it for two years. Tom Johnson continues, saying that he obeys the instinct to create. And then, important statement, he goes on to clearly state what the earnest Holmes quotations, which we had read earlier, only implied. He states how it is we use the universal creative force and co-create with it. Johnson writes, I quote, I know that my God self longs to express its power to manifest, and I do so by means of my thought and action." Unquote. We teach here in religious science that we communicate with and direct universal mind with our own mind, the conscious part as well as the unconscious part. I'm simplifying the process here and breaking up the one mind into parts for purposes of clarity. But we teach that our mind is part of one mind, God. Johnson's final statement brings in the feeling that motivates his desire to be creative. 
It is love for life. Now, because chopping up the treatment injured it badly, I now read it in its beautiful entirety, beginning with Fenwick Holmes's epigraph. The instinct to create is found in every person. There is one creative power that is within everyone, and it is the presence of God. It lives within me. I choose to experience success, prosperity, love, and health always. Therefore, I realize that I must direct mind to create the ongoing experience of these choices. This I do. I obey my instinct to create and see each moment as my opportunity to, opportunity to do exactly that. I know that my God self longs to express its power to manifest, and I do so by means of my thought and action. I face my challenges and use them as opportunities to create the good I wish to have in my life. I dare to dream and see my dream as a blueprint that is guiding my way. My creativity comes out of my e eternal expression of love and I make sure that everything happens just as I choose. Tom Johnson's epigraph, Tom Johnson's spiritual mind treatment. And I close with a poem of mine about the universality of God. I titled it, All Is Dot, Dot, Dot. All there is, health, hummingbirds, fish, fireflies, eggs, ink, gravity, clocks, kindly words, peers, paper dolls, glass, zinc. All there is, wealth, waterfalls, man, music, marts, horns, lakes, roller skates, tears, tamarind balls, owls, oyster shells, buns, cakes, all there is, peace, pumpkin pie, tin, telephones, hills, ham, lambs, parachutes, gold, morning sky, rum, river banks, corn, yam, all there is, joy, jelly rolls, eels, engine mounts, shoes, goats, lumber yards, wheat, totem poles, a baby's smile, barns, boats, all there is, mind, mango trees, plums, paper plates, deer, dogs, bears, flower pots, hay, honeybees, leaves, elephants, lead, frogs, all there is, light limousines, wool, washing soap, whales, rocks, kitchen stools, hay, magazines, bread, manatees, books, socks. All there is, law, lantern shades, pears, porpoises, sand, silk, work, ants, ships, stars, louver blades, rain, crocodiles, glass, milk. All there is, love, laundromats, sharks, sheep, a curtain rod, setting suns, bats, lemons, cats, life. All there is, is God. Namaste.